Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the books and resources that we used for our bird unit study. Now we did a lot of projects for this unit and I want to share with you how these projects came about, what kind of books inspired these projects. I also want to share with you our lesson plan and show you how it kind of changed throughout this unit study. Okay, so we have a lot of projects here. I want to move these projects and actually I want to start with our most favorite book in this whole entire unit and I want to do this because I did not get this book until uh, pretty much the very last day of our unit and so it's not included in the how we put together this unit because I hadn't received this book yet. Now, this book was on my friend's Instagram. Her Instagram is down below in the description box. Head over there because she showcases a lot of really awesome books. This one is called Robins, How They Grow Up. It's by Eileen Christilo. And I absolutely love it out of all of the books for this entire unit, this is my favorite one. So if there was one book that you needed for this unit, this would be it. I totally recommend owning this book. Of course, you can check it out at the library. This book has gorgeous illustrations. This inspired a, a project that I'm gonna share with you in a little bit. It's really well written and you learn a lot throughout this whole story. And it's story, it's it's written in a story format, and so it's really engaging for the children versus some of the other nonfiction books that I have, which are a little bit drier, even though the illustrations are beautiful, they're not quite as captivating as this book. So I highly recommend this book. It's called Robin's How They Grow Up. Now I want to show you the project that we did inspired by uh that book. And I made these trivia base cards they are similar to our professor noggins game let me grab that so that i can show you how how uh this project was inspired by both the book as well as this game uh, let me move this aside though okay so we really love the professor noggins games and these are trivia cards that have two sets of questions on the back. What I love about these cards, aside from it being an awesome game, and I love including games into our homeschool, is that the front cover is also really beautifully illustrated. And this could definitely inspire some art for whatever uh, project you're doing if you're doing like a bird unit study. And the other thing is that the cards are really well made. They're nice and durable and sturdy and they hold up really well to being used in a homeschool setting. Now it comes with easy questions and hard questions. You can roll the dice. Sometimes we'll just do, we'll, you know, we'll just start with question number one and just kind of work our way through that rather than rolling the dice. Something else is that because it's trivia based, sometimes it's a little more challenging to do this game at the start of a unit. But what I've noticed is that this is a great way just to kind of whet our appetites and kind of get us in um, motivated and inspired for the unit. And then as the unit progresses, we find that we've learned things from the resources that we've collected that it becomes easier and easier to play the game. Sometimes if I'm more familiar, I'll do the hard questions. Or if we've gone through all the easy questions, then we'll move on to the hard questions. Or we start off with the easy questions at the start of the unit and then challenge ourselves with the hard questions by the end of the unit. So we really love this game a lot. We have probably 10 or 12 of the Professor Noggins games. They come in all different subject areas. And so we did something similar. Um, actually, I did. I did it... We actually did it multiple times. Now we have videos for all three of these. They're really similar, but they were, they're based on different resources and for different purposes throughout the unit. But let me show you this one to begin with. This one is based on Robins, how they grow up. And we got this book at the end of the unit. And so we didn't have any projects surrounding it, but because I love the illustration so much, I really wanted to do a project with this 
And so keeping with the theme of the rest of the unit, we went ahead and made trivia cards. But because this was at the end of the unit, my children did not make trivia cards, but we all get to participate in the questions because even though it's the end of the unit, we'll definitely carry this over into the next unit because these will make really great opening activities for whatever unit that you're doing and it helps keep the information alive and it kind of challenges us to see how much we remember, you know, long after the unit is over. So I... We made these using our 140 pound watercolor paper. This is made with distress inks. I have tutorials on how to make all of these if you're interested. And then the last thing we did was we laminated it just to protect it. All of these cards have been photographed so that you can look at the questions. They're all on the blog post that accompanies this video. We've got all the different projects that we've done all in one place on my website at pepperandpine.com. You can find that link down in the description box below. Okay, so. Uh, the questions are similar to the kinds that you'd find in the Professor Noggins game. We have some multiple choice. We have some true and false. And then I went ahead and I wrote the answers on the bottom. Uh, typically, I can fit about four to maybe five questions on a card. In this case, there are more true and false. So I was able to fit seven. But in general, I think four four questions is pretty good. These cards measure four and a half inches by six inches, which I found to be a good size for the work that we needed to do. Although I do prefer the smaller size cards, but I think this doesn't leave enough room for us to actually write out our questions since we are doing this by hand. Okay, so these, the Professor Noggins game, highly recommend something else that I would just say, add it to your homeschool because you, you can use it any time of year with all your different subject areas, not just with this unit. But if you choose not to buy the game, then definitely try making your own cards because that's something that I think that you'll enjoy. You'll enjoy the whole process and you'll definitely be able to use them long after the unit is done. Outside Your Window, A First Book of Nature. I really like this book, and yet for some reason it just does not get used enough in our homeschool. I'm so disappointed. I really like the kind of different different illustrations than the ones that I typically like, but I really like these illustrations, even though they're, they're kind of different. Something else, and I know this has nothing to do with the book, but I really like the feel of the paper. It's really nice and thick. It feels like it's really good quality. I, I just really like it a lot. It's really beautiful. It just kind of draws you in. It's really cozy and nice. What I found not working for us as well as I hoped is that the the passages that we're reading, semi-poetry, semi-verse, semi-just information, just hasn't really stuck with my kids. They haven't been super interested in it. I thought they would be more poetry dri driven with more rhyming, and it just doesn't seem that way. And so, unfortunately, it hasn't gotten used enough, but I still love this book. And even knowing that this book wasn't going to get used as much as I hoped, I would still add it to our homeschool. So still really, really like it a lot. Animalium. This is a book that we've had for a couple of years that we have tried to incorporate with our units, but it's been a little bit more challenging. And the reason why I found this, I, mean, I still love it, I still recommend it, but the reason why I'm finding it a little bit more challenging is because, let me get to the section on birds. Here we go. Is because while it has a good amount of information, it's 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 minimal and it's very specific. Now, I love the artwork and I would definitely continue to use this book for art inspiration. We used it more for art inspiration during the mini unit that we had on owls that was part of this greater unit. But overall, I, I, I struggle with really incorporating it in a way that uh, really makes use of this gorgeous book. What we did do is for, you know, we have the other trivia cards that we made because there, there are questions on the back of all of these. We did use pretty much all of the resources that I'm going to show you today. We used all of them when trying to get information for our trivia questions. So definitely you can incorporate this into your homeschool. I don't know if this is available at the library and because it's such a gorgeous book, I would say, you know, <laughs> add it to your homeschool, <laughs> but that's just me because I think it's beautiful and I like it. Okay, let me show you some of these other books here. Practical Naturalist. This is a book, again, that we've used for our other nature units. And what I like about this book versus some of the other books that we have, let me 
grab Nature Anatomy because this one is pretty similar in the sense that it covers a lot of different topic areas, as you can see. This book is illust all illustrated, whereas this book has all is uh, photographs, so it's all photographs rather than illustrations. So I think together these books would make great, um, I guess, great additions to any unit, but by themselves, I, they absolutely don't have enough content to put together a unit. What I've noticed is that the information is really minimal, same as Animalium. It's just not rich enough for my purposes. If you just need a little bit here and there, this makes a really beautiful book. Oh, there are a few illustrations, but for the most part, it's all photographs. It's it's just so uh, captivating to just go through and look at the, look at the photographs and whatnot. But as because our units are the content for the unit, it comes from the books rather than from a curriculum. It's really important that I have enough books that can supply the information that we need to put together our entire unit. And these books generally don't. Super beautiful. I would recommend just picking these up from the library for a specific unit. However, if you are going to be covering multiple units, like multiple subject areas, you know, something on birds and something on plants and something on mushrooms, then this would be a great addition because you could just have one book and it could suit the needs of like multiple units. Okay, and then similar to that, Nature Anatomy, which is super gorgeous, is similar in the sense that it doesn't have a ton of information. Now, we did use the section on birds quite a bit. We did read through these different pages, and I found that it was somewhat um, disconnected, but still valuable. So I, I, I really love this book so much, but again, I'm really, really struggling to really get the best uses, usage out of it for our units. What we did use this for is our inspiration for sure and to get questions for our trivia cards. The section that I loved most in this bird section was this uh, two-page spread on bird calls. This information I did not find in other books. I really did enjoy it. It also provided some artwork for our trivia cards. But then for the rest of the stuff, like the variety of nests, when it talks about each of the different nests, it just, um, it didn't work so well for us. I hate like not having like a rave re review for this book because I love it so much, but, uh, it just, it just didn't work so well. Uh, what it could work for is if you are looking to study just one particular bird, like say Anna's hummingbird, then this book would provide something. Possibly this book would provide something. Then you could get a couple of just picture books on hummingbird, hummingbirds and then just kind of work that into your unit. But, um, you know, those, that's just what happened. Okay. Enough about this book. Still love it. Definitely something to check out at the library, but because it's super gorgeous and covers so many different topic areas, I would just add it to our homeschool library. United Tweets of America. This book is super whimsical, really beautifully illustrated, super funny, a lot of fun to read. We didn't read it cover to cover, but it kind of it kind of lends itself to that a little bit, but we just chose different states and then we would read it. I think for an adult, it will be more humorous than for a child because some of the stuff that's funny, you kind of have to be older to understand, I think, in a way. Uh, this is definitely something that I would check out from the library unless you were a total bird enthusiast um, or you wanted to add this to a geography unit. Uh, otherwise, I would just pick it out from the library. The Spider and the Doves. I am super pleased with this book. Uh, something that I want to say about this book that's totally unrelated to the book is just the quality of the book. The pages are kind of um, that shiny. It's just not as nice as that thicker paper and that matte finish. And totally doesn't matter, but I just am drawn to those books a little bit more. This book has wonderful uh, watercolors. 
and then it has the black silhouette on top. So this inspired a project that I'm going to share with you in a minute. But the reason why I super, super loved adding this one into our unit is because for a bird unit, which is a science unit, we were able to bring in some history, some geography in a way, same with this book, some geography, and some religion. Even though this is not a religious book, because it relates to a time period that's religiously significant for us as Muslims, this book tied in nicely to that. But this is not a religious book. This would suit any, uh, you know, anybody. But if you're doing uh, a unit on spiders or doves, then I would highly recommend adding this book in. It's told by from the perspective of the animals in the story, so the doves and the spider, rather than the people. And I really, really love, love, love getting that different perspective on a historical situation that the children and I are very familiar with. So I loved, uh, I loved the artwork just so gorgeous don't really care for the black silhouettes over it but i want to share with you the project that uh that was in, that we did that was inspired by this book although it probably would have been better for us to do something with the actual doves because this is a bird unit we did something with the spider webs but anyway let me just share with this with you we did some watercolors using our Stockmar watercolors and they're just in these really adorable little mini milk jugs right here. Just went ahead and I mixed up 10 colors in like the, you know, from the rainbow of colors. And then we used some watercolor paper. I don't remember the weight of this, but I have a tutorial on this in case you're interested. Some paper, or the black paper to do the silhouette. And this was a really nice meditative, simple project that went along with the book and this is something that happens to us a lot or to me a lot is that I will we will get we will get our books for a unit and I might have some projects already set up for the unit but then we end up coming up with a ton more projects as we are working through the unit so I just want to share with you this is the bird unit study my my lesson plan sort of and it goes through the books that we wanted to use, the reference material, and some of the games and activities. And you can see there aren't like a ton of games and activities here, or rather activities. And over the course of the unit, as we read the books, more and more activities, um, well, we were inspired to do more and more activities based on the book. So that's what happens. I'm not setting out with, you know, 15 different projects to do. It's like we're reading a book and it's like, oh, we could do, we could turn this into a project, especially when it includes art. So that's that uh a nest is noisy okay this is by diana aston and sylvia long and i love the books by diana aston because the illustrations are so breathtakingly gorgeous and i also like the way they are written it it, it suits multiple ages so you have like this larger text where you, it says like a nest is enormous or tiny and if you are reading the story to like a preschooler for instance I would just read those big parts and then let them just enjoy the pretty artwork. But if you're reading it to an older child or you really want more content, then I would read the other parts that are, you know, the paragraphs, <laughs> the smaller text. And that's going to give you a lot more content. And of course, it still relates to illustrations. I love, love, love books like this because when I'm putting together my units, they are always for multiple ages. Even if the focus is for one particular child or one particular grade level, my, all my, my kids, and right now I'm down to homeschooling two because two of them are done. So, uh, at any one given time, I would be homeschooling three, maybe a fourth who was, you know, really, really young. And so having a book like this or just having different resources that can work with different ages is really helpful because an older child will definitely enjoy reading this if you're reading this to a younger child. But it's not likely my 12 year old is going to sit next to me as I read a picture book. But because my eight year old daughter is with us, it's as if it's okay. You know, it's not like, oh, that's kind of weird. You know, there's, there's that kind of uh, feeling that it's like, oh, it's okay. It's really for my younger sister, but I can enjoy it too because they still want to, but they are growing up and it's, it becomes like less interesting for them. Okay. So I totally love this book. I want to share with you some of the, well, the, 
the nest, the, uh, a single nest that we found and then also one that we ordered. So I can take a break from the books and, and share this with you. We found a nest out in our uh, front yard. We did not remove it from its location for over a year just to make sure that it wasn't going to be used again. We think this is a song sparrow's nest. We're not 100% sure, but we went ahead and we made eggs to go with it. I'm going to show you the book that inspired this particular project. Uh, we cared for the nest as best as we could, but it, it, it does fall apart easily. So we want to put it, now that we're done with the unit, we want to put it in a nice, safe place. And we're really, well, I was really excited to have found this and then, you know, even more excited that we made the eggs to go along with it. Of course, you can order some nests online. This isn't a real nest. It's just a replica. But if you wanted to do something similar and have your own little eggs, actually, let me find you ones that are smaller. We went ahead and we made a lot of eggs using our oven bake polymer clay. This is a really soft clay that's super, super easy to work with. Different than the harder polymer clays that you might be familiar with. They stay soft like forever. <laughs> I haven't really tested that, but they they stay soft for a really long time, even with the, with the package opened. And then they would make, it'd be like a really cute little project to do that is a, a simpler version than the projects I'm going to show you that were inspired by this book and other books. But anyway, uh, you can get your nests online. You can make your own little eggs and it'd be a lot of fun. Uh, when you are finding nests in nature, just bear in mind that some birds come back to the same nest for you know a second or third time at sometimes twice in one season sometimes the next season so just keep an eye on them and and don't remove them until you're sure that they're not going to be used anymore okay so uh let me just show you the felting projects that we did this one actually we we did previously but the kit would work perfectly for an owl unit this is by wool pets and it comes with all the materials you need for needle felting. It comes with a really sharp, tiny needle, and you can felt this with wool. And this is typically a project that I would do with older students, but because we're a family with younger students, my younger kids would do this also, and with a varying degrees of, um, uh, I guess, <laughs> the <laughs> output was a little bit varied depending on their abilities, basically. Okay, so since we had already done the owl previously, even though this was, you know, perfect for our, our bird unit, we went ahead and we made birds for this unit. And we were, I think it was this book, inspired which birds we were going to do. Uh, because there, is it this page? Oh no, maybe it's the other book on eggs. Uh, I will show that to you in a second because it had a, a ton of, here it is a ton of birds at the back of the book and we use that as inspiration for the needle felting project. There we go. And so my son did the Scarlet Tanager and I made, I don't think it's shown here, I made the Song Sparrow so that it could go along with our nest. So that's what we did. Okay, this is for another project I'm going to show you in a minute. We totally forgot to use this book. It's the Audubon uh, bird uh, books, <laughs> Birds of North America book, and it's just a little field guide, and we totally forgot to use this. It's so tiny and just kind of got lost in the stuff. The way that we would use this moving forward is not really something that we would read cover to cover, but what might work really well for you if a bird unit is too broad or you're looking at all of our resources and thinking, I just don't even know where to start, I would just suggest focusing on one to three birds, especially ones in your area, and then using these different resources to to focus what you're going to study and so you could just choose like say the bolt like well actually the red-tailed hawk that's in our area and I would just go through all the different resources that we had and just kind of draw the the information about this particular bird and then uh, we could do some trivia questions we could do some artwork we can go into uh, the environment and try to look for them and just kind of keep it a little bit more simple I get carried away that's just what happens with me so don't mind me. Okay. While we have this book out, let me just show you how this inspired uh, a whole lot of other projects. 
this is just a gorgeous book and this two page spread is just super um, beautiful and I wanted to recreate it and so we went ahead and did our own watercolor version of this and can see like I think we did a pretty good job <laughs> and this is my uh, 12 year old son's uh, artwork and this is a project uh, well, actually, he did this whole project on his own, and I went ahead and I did also the entire project on my own, and we worked kind of side by side for this project, but this is definitely a great project to do as a group project. So what you might consider doing if you want to recreate something like this, I would suggest, depending on your students' abilities, is that you might consider drawing the silhouettes of each of these eggs and then the student can watercolor them in because that's a lot of fun to do. And writing them can get a little bit tiresome for some students. So you might consider writing it in and then they could do the border or something like that. Just kind of divvy up the different obligations, especially if you have multiple students. Sometimes doing one project for each student can get a little bit lengthy and they might get tired of tired of it. And then you have to store all those projects. So sometimes doing a group project is a, a much better way to go. Okay, so we uh, did another project related to this, but first I want to show you this book right here called Birds, Nests, and Eggs. And actually we read this one before we read An Egg is Quiet. And we read this one, you know, cover to cover. And we were looking at all the different eggs and what we uh, decided to do is do egg replicas. And we ended up doing this as a group project. And this is the project that we did. And we used our distress inks to, to watercolor these different eggs. And we also used chicken eggs. So it made it super easy to do. I have a tutorial on how we did this. And then we mounted it on some watercolor paper using our hot glue gun. And my son did all of the uh, labeling and then as a family, my eight-year-old daughter, my 12-year-old son, and I all did the painting. Okay, so that, that was a lot of fun, right? But, um, you know, the eggs were all different sizes. And I thought, well, we really should try a project that really showcases how different these eggs are in size and in shape because the shape of the chicken egg is all the same and pretty much oval but the eggs in the book they range from round to super tiny to quite pointy so again i used the uh, oven bake ultra soft oven bake clay to make these and then the distress inks didn't work on this so we used uh, acrylic paints in order to uh, color these so that they matched the images in the book so this was a great book that inspired at least two projects but wait there's more so the other thing that this inspired well actually it was the same project my son and I both did this project my eight-year-old daughter opted not to do this one and i went ahead and i mounted it on some chipboard and then we can hang it in the school room but i can't remember if i just didn't have any more chipboard at the time or or what happened but i had these really really beautiful shadow frames that i picked up from party city they had an image of um, easter on the inside and so they were heavily discounted because i got this like after Easter. So these gorgeous little uh, shadow boxes were only 50 cents. So I bought them all and we're, we did projects with them. And so I, I went ahead and I added a label that's actually coming off. So I got to glue that back down again. I added a label and then he uh, fit them all inside, which I think it just looks so gorgeous. But because he wasn't going to have room to write the names of each of these eggs i went ahead and i printed them off for him and i really really love the way that his turned out it's uh, it looks like it could be in a museum it's really nice and when we've shown people they have actually thought that we've found these eggs in nature which i believe you're not allowed to take but anyway don't know the legality on that but i do know that that these you know they 
they really look like the real egg, at least, you know, from our inexperienced uh, perspective. Okay, so that inspired that project, but uh, there's more. Let me move these carefully aside so that I can show you what, uh, what happened next. So we did, so we were already familiar with making uh, those eggs. And then once we got done doing our watercolor of this project, I think you know where this is going. We decided to make one with the eggs actually full size replicas. So three dimensional ones. Now this ended up being a group project because this was really involved. You can see that they are all, you know, quite large in a way. If you buy one package of the ultralight oven baked clay, you should be able to fit, uh, you know, you should be able to make all of these. We did need a variety of acrylic paints and my son formed all of the eggs. I did help with a few. He did paint about half of them and I labeled them and did the border. So this was definitely a group project. And because this also came towards the end of our unit, there wasn't as much enthusiasm to do this, especially since we had already done this one and we had done the larger uh, chicken egg replica and we'd already done the watercolor. So by this time we were kind of egged out. Okay, so let me put that one aside and show you the other project that we did um, with the frames. Uh, again, we used another frame to display an entire uh, skeleton of a rodent that came from our owl pellet dissection kit. So this I highly recommend. We, it was fabulous. You can get them at Rainbow Resource. You can get them with either two owl pellets or three. While we were doing this project, a friend of mine sent me owl pellets from her property. We were able to dissect them. We have a, a um, tutorial on this. And because this relates to our owl unit, I will um, also say that our our owl unit review has a lot more information about the projects we did specifically with our owl unit. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just show you really quickly uh, one of the books that we use with our owl unit. This one's called Owl Babies and it's a cute little board book. And we also were, we were able to find some owl feathers in nature because this whole unit was inspired by a class that my children were taking locally with the uh, National Audubon Society and because they were studying birds and owls. This kind of was the inspiration for this whole entire unit. Okay, let me show you while we're at it, the other artwork that we did for this unit. This, these uh, pastels, chalk pastels, are mainly from our owl unit. I also have tutorials on how we did this as well as the live lesson um, on, on those, that artwork. And that was inspired by... This book called Barn Owls, another really beautiful picture book. Uh, we also have uh, Owl Moon. This is another really nice picture book that I think is library worthy, uh, unless you super into owls. Zoo Books is another uh, resource that is new to me that I absolutely love. I'm going to be looking for other zoo books on the different topic areas that we are studying. This was, if you could only have one resource for a particular unit, if you could find a zoo book on that particular unit, I think it would be sufficient. And then we have Owls, Strange and Wonderful. I really, really like the books by Lawrence Pringle. They're beautifully illustrated. They're slightly story-driven initially, and then there's just more more information that goes along with it. I really, really like these books, and I have looked for as many books as he carries for the different topic areas, and we will just build units around them because I really have enjoyed them so much. Uh, okay, so then let me show you these uh, few more books. 
We have a lot of books. Uh, this one is actually out of print. It's called Birds by Peter Gill. I believe I got this from the library bookstore. It turned out to be a really great resource. It's nonfiction, has really nice illustrations. It goes through quite a bit of information. This makes great content for making trivia cards or narration or journal cards. Uh, it, it's more of an overview, which was really necessary for our unit. We needed something that was a little bit more general about birds, and this one totally fit the bill. We have Arrowhawk. This is a true survival story. This is definitely one that I would recommend adding to a bird unit. Uh, totally library worthy, but if you're really into birds, I would recommend owning this one. And it was a really great addition to our unit to provide something that was uh a, a biography in, in a sense, uh, not so much of a scientist or an ornithologist, but a biography of a bird. So I really, really liked this book. This book was from the Family Reading Crate by Build Your Library. I'm going to link that one down below because we actually got this crate over a year before we did this unit. So it, it hung around in our homeschool for a long time. Uh, eyewitness books, birds. I have not been really ordering new eyewitness books. Uh, I find them a little bit hard to incorporate into our units, mainly the history units. I do still own a number of them. We do still use them for our units. They are great resources if you just need something specific. They don't make good reading cover to cover books, but they are packed with a lot of information. So I wouldn't discount them entirely. I'm just finding them a little bit more challenging to use in our units the way that I can use some of our other resources. Okay, I still have more. Bear with me. Uh, I have, uh, let me move this aside for a minute and show you these flashcards. These are really, really beautiful flashcards that we did not utilize nearly at all. This would be great to pull a few cards that we, we only did, I think, one or two activities with these cards. But it'd be really great to pull a couple of cards if you were studying some specific birds, then this would really come in handy. It has information on the back about where the birds are found and just some general descriptions about the birds. And then, of course, each each card comes with two illustrations, I believe a male and a female of each of these birds. They're really beautiful. We just didn't use them as much as I hoped, but uh, still, still I like them. I because we weren't able to utilize them as much as I would have liked. I can't really recommend that you know you go out and buy this particular um, product. Okay, so along with all of our books, I do try to include, and this is especially uh, relevant when I'm doing my history units, but I do try to include some fiction for my children to read or f as a read aloud. And what I did not do enough research for this bird unit, but I, I did include the My Side of the Mountain trilogy. This one includes, uh, I think at least in all three of these books, the story of the hawk or the falcon that is with the main character. I think his name is Sam. This was, this is just a fabulous, fabulous book. I was first introduced to this book many, many years ago. All of my children have either listened to me read this book or they have read it to themselves, um, except my youngest, who is still, you know, making her way through the homeschool journey. Highly, highly recommend this book, library or own it. It's fabulous. My 12-year-old son has now read this one probably like three times. So definitely a great addition. And it has a bird theme, but it's especially great for anyone who's like into survival or adventure, especially my boys really, really love this book because it's about a boy who goes and spends either an entire winter or an entire year, I think an entire year up in the mountains um, on the East Coast. So really fabulous book. Okay, uh, another fiction book that we added to this unit is called Zeno and The Desperate Adventures of Zeno and Alia. I've already read this to my eight-year-old daughter. My son read it to himself but didn't find it that interesting. My daughter liked it a lot and wanted me to read it again for this unit. So we went ahead and we added it in. This is about an African parrot. And it's a sweet story. I can't say that I really, really loved it. If you had to choose one book, I would definitely say this one. But still, my daughter really enjoyed it, and it was something special that she and I could do together. 
Okay, um, about birds, this is a picture book that's super simple to read, really beautiful illustrations, very minimal text, but at the very back of the book, there's a lot more information about each of the illustrations. So if you needed more info, you could find it at the back of the book. But if you're homeschooling really young children or you just want a great book for really young children, then I would recommend this one. And again, it works really well with multiple ages because you could just read the picture book as is, Young children would enjoy it. Older children would get something out of the illustrations. And then you could go into some more detail once those little ones run off to play with toys. You can keep the big ones and, and continue reading. Unless they want to play with toys too, because that's fine also. All right, so Animalium, I showed you the book earlier, but there are also postcards that come along with this. And initially, I had some ideas on what we could do with the postcards. First, they make great drawing inspiration uh, for artwork. But I thought these would make really great writing, uh, a writing activity because you can uh, send postcards to friends and family and write a little bit about the unit or just write in general, like, how are you doing? You know, we, we're homeschooling now. Uh, and that would help with adding, you know, other subject areas like reading, writing, um, uh, handwriting, grammar, printing, how to address uh, a postcard or an envelope into your science unit. But these cards are so gorgeous that I couldn't part with them. So we haven't sent any of them off. But in the meantime, they still make really beautiful drawing inspiration. If you don't want to pull out the whole book or you're just going to choose one or the other, then you could do the postcards. Still recommend the book over the postcards if you can only choose one, though. Okay, uh, I only just have... These, let me just make sure. <laughs> I think I only just have these things to show you and we're gonna close out the video. So uh, my son made a set of these trivia cards initially on his own as the written content for this unit. I noticed that with a lot of our science units, we really didn't do a lot of writing. We would do artwork, we would do projects, we would read a lot, we would talk about things, we would play games, but we didn't produce any work. And this started to kind of uh, eat away at me. Just I just didn't feel really good about doing all these units and not having much to show for it in the written format. We still had a lot to show for it, but I wanted more writing. So what I decided to do is make these trivia cards. We did this earlier in the school year with our astronomy unit, and they were such a hit that I thought we would add it into this unit. My son did these with chalk pastels, and then, or rather, he did he wrote the questions first, and then he drew with chalk pastels. Now, at the time, I did not make this a group project. I didn't even work alongside with him. He did this entirely on his own, and the process was not as enjoyable. He, he complained more about the project. I had to remind him to do the work. He didn't like doing the cards at all. And I felt kind of bad by the midpoint of the unit, especially once I said, okay, just do six cards, and you can see there are more than six here. Because at some point I'm like, oh, we're reading more books. There's more content. Can you do more cards? And he was just kind of not super interested in it. So what I decided to do was make my own set of cards so that I, I basically told him that I would match him card for card. Any card that he made, I would make a card as well. And that way we could play this game at anytime during our unit but especially during at the end of our unit I would have this I would have a card I could read him the questions if he got them right he got to keep the card he could have his card he would read me the questions and then if I got them right I would keep those cards I told him like I you know it's work on your cards as much as you can because uh, my cards were not easy <laughs> all of them are photographed they're on my website you're welcome to use the questions if you'd like um, if you find any errors please let me know we did them the best that we could okay so then I of course then made my own set and then that also inspired the first set of cards that you saw and so as our unit progressed anytime we had a, an opportunity to do a written written work based on a project that we did we went ahead and we made these cards and so uh this is the last set of cards that we made i made three he made one and this was based on our egg dissection and we dissected the egg we had one that was soaking in vinegar we did a hard-boiled egg we just cracked an egg and we observed it just kind of looked at all the different parts and then we made these cards again with the trivia on the back 
for for a project like this if you're doing like an egg dissection for instance you might consider doing the back more like you know what you did or maybe the procedure or your observations or just a narration about it based on some of the other books that you read went ahead and we just kind of stayed with the same format of doing questions the last thing that we did for this unit not the last literally the last thing but one more thing that i want to show you is that we actually made paint using egg yolk and I think the, the stone is called lapis lazuli and it is a blue stone that was used to make paint and because we had studied uh, this in our middle ages unit it was a great way to tie in a little bit of history and science with this current unit uh, we did okay we made some mistakes in how we actually made the paint but it was a great process nonetheless it was super quick we happened to have all of the materials that we needed on hand in order to do this and it was kind of cool it was kind of neat to to see how um how paint was made back when we you, you just didn't go to the local craft store and buy acrylic paint you know so that was kind of cool okay so that rounds out all of the material that we used for our bird unit study you can check the description box below for the link to the blog post that accompanies this video it will have all of the tutorials that we did for this unit as well as all of the books that we used and don't forget that if you want to see how our homeschool is progressing on a daily basis you can find me on instagram at pepper and pine